You're now tuning into the Who and How Club with your host, Eris Dejan. Yo, yo, yo. Sorry? Yo, yo, yo. Alright, we're good. Alright. <laughs> okay. I got the jitters. I don't know why. But I don't I, know why either. I don't know why. I'm just... <laughs> this is a good moment. This is a funny moment. Happy moment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Who and How Club. It is your host, Eris Dejan. Your boy, once again. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club, and you're tuning in to episode five. I got a special guest sitting across from me right now that's giving me, he's the reason for my jitters. Uh, we're going to introduce him in a few, just in a, in a couple minutes. I just want to send a special shout out to everybody who's going to be watching and listening on the live today. Uh, shout out to our producer, Athena, in the background. Uh, everybody who's just uh, supporting the movement and yeah, just you know, adding to the energy, the who and how energy. We got the mugs, um, so shout out to that. Get your mugs, holler at me if you want one, or just come on the show to get one. Um, I'm gonna keep this intro short because I want to get into the, 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 the meat of this sandwich because uh, we got a lot of good, good stuff coming for today's episode. So, with no further ado. Introduce yourself, sir, to the people. My name is Chris Snodgrass, and uh, yeah, <laughs> me and Eris work together. Um, I also introduce myself. So we got Chris sitting across from me. Uh, you might know him, know him as Big Red mm-hmm. online. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your IG? Big Red, Big Red. It's Big Red Red 86. Big Red Red 86. So go and follow him or just look for him on my page at only one Eris, O N L Y number one, A R Y S. And follow us at Who How Club on all the social media sites and uh, as well as the website, whohowclub.com. So last week I announced you mm. uh, because I have a special guest on the show every other week. Mm-hmm. So on those episodes in between, I tend to announce who the, the guest is on the following week and, you know, just make that little announcement. So I'm really happy and I'm a very appreciative that you're here with me today because I didn't think this would ever I'm happen. Ha- I'm happy to be here. Happy to support you, man. I appreciate it. Let's let's go back to when I first asked you <laughs> if you would ever do something like this with me, mm. which was at work. Right. We do work together, yes. Um, remind me, you were a bit reluctant to, to actually do it, right? Well, the reason why is because I was thinking of I have three kids, yes. three dogs, and I also have my in-laws in the basement, right? So More shit I didn't know about yeah, you. So, yeah, so to coordinate that here at home... <laughs> was kind of a big deal like, yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah. so right now my wife is out with the kids they're at a friend's place yeah and my dogs are downstairs probably terrorizing the house yeah yeah so it's just it was a bit to coordinate but yeah we made it work yeah because we spoke about this a while back exactly and months later yeah i think we spoke about this in the winter time we and did. now we now did. we're here yeah. now is this uh is this easy to coordinate like to get the family out the house for a little bit and get some free time, where because it's a packed no. house, right? No, not really. How often do you get moments like these in the house? Very rare. Very like, rare. Like you got to set something up, or like, yeah. like they're out because we're doing the show today, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's the reason. Yeah. Okay, uh, otherwise everybody would be in the house. Yeah, going I kicked crazy. everybody out for you. I appreciate. It. <laughs> I know that's what I'm trying to get at. I, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to hear that yeah, part. Yeah. Well, you, there you go. <laughs> well, shout out to the family. Shout out to the shout out to the dogs. Yeah. Thank yeah. you to the family for yeah. uh, Snodgrass, right? Yeah. The Snodgrass, Snodgrass family, family yeah. for yeah. giving us some space to just have an honest conversation and some quiet quiet time. Mm-hmm. Two brothers sitting across from each other. Yes, sir. And we're gonna get to know each other, even though we work with one another. Uh, we haven't had much one on one time. No. But in those conversations that we have had, I feel and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel that you and I are a, b- a bit like minded. Yeah. We joke about the same things. Yeah. Sometimes when something weird at the office happens, we'll give each other the look. Like, yeah. Or we'll send each other a text. Like, yeah. what the F? Yeah. Yeah. 
So I, I feel like, you know, that's why I invited you, too, because I felt like outside of that element, you and I would be able to connect mm-hmm. on a deeper level. Absolutely. Am I correct yeah. with that? Or? Yeah. I agree. This guy's going to be a, the hardest interview I've ever had. Why? That shouldn't be hard. Give me more. Give me more. What do you think? When you first met me, what was your uh, what, what were your thoughts when, you first, when we first met? When did we fe- first meet? So we first met in October 2018 when you started on as uh, yeah yeah don't no specific thing but yeah, yeah, your yeah, job yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we met at the office yeah we met at the office okay yeah. and what was our first interaction do you remember that at all I think it was just like a general greeting like like hey, what's up I'm Chris you're Eris blah yeah. blah blah yeah simple but <clears throat> I feel as you came into the office more and more we we connected more and more because we're around the same age you're a yes. bit younger but. <laughs> You know, we connected because usually the people we work with are, you know, mm-hmm. old enough to be our parents. <laughs> yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So, so we connected on that like youthful level. That, exactly. That you that young exactly. perspective. Something in common that we had. Yes. Right yeah. away. Especially being in our positions, we te- we're managers. We're you know in that in that um, uh, under that umbrella mm-hmm. and under the management umbrella, mm-hmm. and we're nine times out of ten we're managing people like you said who are could be our aunts our uncles exactly our parents exactly pretty much and yeah. we, we would discuss like the difficulties behind that and what comes with that the pros and cons etc and then we started to share each other's perspectives and we we're like yeah yeah we kind of see things very similarly exactly um in as we would speak you know often mm-hmm. like in our random run-ins with each other um, I was always curious about you, genuinely yeah. curious, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, about your life. You're always like, asking questions, yeah. and <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this guy, does, this guy hates me. No, <laughs> I no, 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 not at all. Because I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like, I didn't want to come off nosy, but no. obviously, when you're when you're in a room full of like ten people, you're gonna be drawn to that person that you feel you could connect with the most. Mm-hmm. So I would ask you questions about who you were and. You know, have like real deep questions and stuff like that. And mm. we would get to know each other. And I would find out like, you know, like I never knew you were married. I was shocked. Yeah. I never knew you had kids. Yeah. I was shocked when you told me that. Yeah. You know, and like. And that that kind of stuff, I don't mind sharing with mm. people because I'm proud of that. Like, mm. You know what I mean? I'm proud of having my family and having my dogs. And, yes. you know, being a homeowner here, you know. Yes. So I'm, these are the things that I'm very proud of. Yes. And I mean, family is first for me. Mm. Um. I mean, I don't know how else to explain that to people. You know what I mean? Mm. So when when you say that you feel like you came off nosy, it's not. I don't think I don't feel like it was that at all. Like I'm I'm very proud to share that with anybody. Yes. No matter who you are. Yes. Why do do you feel like uh, people are um, not not ashamed, but like they're kind of closed off when it comes to answering questions like that, especially at work? Right. Like about family and stuff like that. Like they keep it so separate. Yeah. Like you embrace, mm-hmm. you're you're not a, afraid to embrace. You know your love for family mm-hmm. and sharing information like that. Why do you think some people are closed off when it comes to stuff like that? Just people in general, not just at work. Um, I would say maybe some people are. <clears throat> First thing that comes to mind is embarrassed, maybe. Mm. Um, or. I don't know. Some people are just private people, right? Right. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not like I don't want to say I'm a private person, like you know what I mean? Like I don't again, I don't mind sharing about my family and yeah. what my family does. Like my son plays football, my daughter does whatever. Like you know what I mean? I don't yeah. mind sharing that kind of stuff. Um, but that's because you're proud. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why honestly, I don't know why people would Keep that kind of stuff close to the chest. I don't. I don't know why they would do that. Because if you think about it, for me, at, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, everybody has a family. Yeah, the majority of yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. world. You know, we come yeah. from somewhere. We have siblings. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. family members, etc. We all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never understood why there's this this feeling of like having to be very private. Yeah. About something that majority of the world has anyway. Exactly. You know exactly. What I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So was that something that you kind of learned like growing up or just in your experience being a father and a husband, you um, embraced that? So growing or were up, you always open about stuff like that? Growing up, it was uh, it was a bit different for me. My my parents were uh, I grew up in Regent Park downtown. Yeah. Um, and growing up in Regent Park, I mean, my 
my parents were how do I say like very lenient they didn't really care about what I did or anything yeah. like that yeah. um I they just weren't so strict they weren't as strict I like what do you mean they just didn't care period okay okay the the, the good kind of care like didn't care or the bad didn't care like like <laughs> I love I think, my mom I love my dad no but of at course the same time yeah they didn't care what I did okay Okay. Were like, there a lot of you growing up, like many siblings and stuff? Or? There was just me and my sister. Okay. And yeah, they they just didn't really care what we did. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, we just did our own thing. And honestly, me and my sister turned out great for what we've been through. What you, right, right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. So get back to like, uh, so your parents didn't care. You kind of roamed and you did your own thing. Mm-hmm. But where did you pick up the the whole not being so private when it came to family and embracing that and sh- not being afraid to share? I mean, I think I get, I think I get that maybe from my wife. Like you know, mm. um, I mean, my wife's like uh, like like my best friend. Mm. Like you know what I mean? Mm. Like uh, we met when we were fifteen. <laughs> I mean, we've been together for eighteen years. Like it's like you know what I mean? Like we've been through a lot together. Yeah. Like a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, you know. Um, and I mean, she's taught me a lot as well. Like, you know what I mean? Even my in-laws that, that are here, that live in my basement with me. Um, yeah. I mean, they've they've taught me a lot as well. Yeah. They're like, they're my in-laws, but they're also like my parents as well. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Because yes. they've, they've, uh, they've helped me with my kids yes. a lot. And yeah. they've, they've kind of taught me how to be a parent because mm. they've been there from the beginning. From the beginning. You know? So that's your ride or die. Yeah. Since 15 years old. Yeah. Shout out to her. Yeah. Let's cheers absolutely. to her. Absolutely. Ride or die. Yeah. What's her name? Can I ask? Jennifer. Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever you say 18 years, I think of the Kanye West song. 18 years. Yeah. 18 years. Yeah. She got, yeah. What was that? Gold Digger? Yeah. I I, yeah. Oh, my God. Someone's knocking. Baby. Here it comes. Here they come. Trick or treat. Oh <laughs> uh, no, maybe that was uh, some friends. Do you feel like uh, <clears throat> like her parents? Um, was there any void that they might have filled in place of maybe what your parents should have played, like the roles that they should have played yeah. in your upbringing or absolutely. being what, becoming a husband and all that jazz? Like absolutely. Like yeah. what were those kind of things <clears throat> that you you learned from them? You would say. That maybe you should have learned from your side. I mean, I started. Ha- I had. I had my first child at eighteen. So mm. I mean, I had to grow up really fast. Mm. And I mean, I've been working since I was fourteen, fifteen, and even before that, I was doing like little things like selling flowers and at the corner or yes. Dickie D's bike. Like you know what I mean? Yes, like yes. all that. I did all that stuff. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Um, I mean. I don't like they just they were just there to support me support. I was going to, you know what I mean? And I, I, again, I didn't really have that growing up. Like, you know what I mean? Right. The support structure wasn't there. Like it is when I met my wife, like, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. So you and uh, Jennifer, you guys went to high school together. No, I'm assuming. No. No. So how did you guys meet? Let's take, take us Uh, back to that, that moment. So when I was living in Regent park, um, I went to, elementary school with my wife's cousin okay um so we met through my wife's cousin basically Mm. um and and how old are you here 15 yeah 15 and my wife's uh cousin and grandfather lived on sumac actually (laughs) okay um what are the odds yeah yeah so you know you know the park there right yeah yeah, sumac and uh shooter Yeah, yeah yeah that's where we met that's crazy i know i know so that's where we met, um, and we had our. We work in the area, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, so we, that's yeah. why, yeah. Um, we had our we had our first kiss. Yes. In my grand in her grandfather's house. I mean, mm. um, and yeah, it was just it went on from there. Do you believe in love at first sight? Would you would you categorize that? I mean, it was a long moment, time those ago. Those moments, yeah. It was a long time ago, I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. Huh. Eighteen years. Yeah. Like, I think about my life right now. I'm 30. I was about to say 31. I'm 30. I just turned 30. And it's like, 
like we're very we're close in age, right? But yeah. I, I I couldn't fathom. Not that I never wanted it or don't want it at mm-hmm. this moment. It's just like eighteen years with a person. Yeah. yeah. There must have there must have been so so many trials and tribulations. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but to I mean, still I mean that's that's how you build a stronger relationship, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. some people just they throw in the towel, like you know what I mean. Mm. When, t- when when times get hard, like you yes. know what I mean. Yes. Low on money, or you know the basic shit that people go through, like yes. you know what I mean. Yes. When and then when tough t- when times get tough, they just they throw in the towel and they say forget about it. You know what I mean? It's easier to be single. Do you, from your perspective, do you feel like those tough times is what makes things get stronger or become you know greater with your bond with someone? Like when you when you both are going through the shits. Mm-hmm. And times are rough, mm-hmm. but you make it out of that. You guys become stronger, no? Is Absolutely. that the truth? Absolutely. Because yeah. I mean, you've had that Because once you get to the other end, once you get out of that heated argument or whatever you're in, like, you know what I mean? Once you get out of that yeah. and you guys make up and you're all better, like, it's, yeah, it's like, you're, like, it's like you've reached another level. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so you, this is great. I love this. Is yeah, yeah. So, awesome. the, so the kids are here, obviously. <laughs> you can hear them in the background. I this can hear the mic great. picking I can it hear up. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and ladies, uh, yeah, go ahead. On go call? Ahead. No, no, no. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, no one is peeing in the background, ladies and gentlemen. That's a fish <laughs> tank. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. So, we were speaking about 15. Um, take us to the moment where you decide as a, you propose, right? Yeah. So take us but to that. We so we just celebrated our fifth anniversary on yeah. June twenty eighth. Yeah, our fifth wedding anniversary. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. So for the longest time, I didn't really think it was necessary to get married. Okay. But then, uh, you know, we came to a point where we said, you know, we might as well, you know, make it legit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything above, above board. You know, all yeah. all good. It just made sense. Yeah. Because that's the person yeah, that yeah. you're. But the bottom line is just like a, it's like a twenty thousand dollar party. <laughs> really, that, that's a conversation really... we had as well. <laughs> we we spoke about you know what I mean. It's, everything that went into yeah, that. It's so much. It's so much work. It's like a. Yeah. It's so much work, and and for the women, it's a lot of work too. You know, you gotta get yeah. dressed, and you gotta get all the. You get all you gotta get all the bridesmaids dresses and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the men, you just go to Moore's, pick up a suit, and call and it a day. Good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I wanna I wanna get into fears in a second, but let's okay. go back to the timeline. So okay, fifteen, you meet Jennifer. Mm-hmm. You're Chris. You're roaming. You mm-hmm. got your sister. You're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. You're pretty independent, pretty young. Yeah. You get introduced to Jennifer. You guys connect. So now let's fast forward to let's say. Do you guys move in together first before the first child comes? No. So first child comes. So around eighteen, right? Yeah. So I'm eighteen. So Jen's one year, one month, and one day older than me. <laughs> um, so um, I'm eighteen. She's nineteen, and she has Josh, our oldest son. Yeah. Um, and then once he was born, I moved into her mom's house. Yeah. Um, which was at Coxwell and Danforth area. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I stayed there for about four or five years yeah. and saved up for this place here that we're at now. So take us take us to those moments when like was it was he was it planned? No. So it not was at eighteen. Not at eighteen, right? <laughs> no. So what kind of emotions are you are you feeling in those moments? Like As you were just saying, fear. fear. And the biggest fear. What was the most th- what was the thing you were afraid of? the most in those moments not knowing how to be a parent not Mm -hmm. knowing not knowing how i'm gonna provide yeah you know it's you know i'm gonna to provide for a child is a big deal you Mm -hmm. know what i mean there's a lot of needs especially when they're a baby yeah you know what i mean if if the mother can't breastfeed for whatever reason formula diapers yeah why provide it's another it's all the furniture that comes with it you know what i mean it's it's a big deal man uh what did your parents say Again, they didn't. wasn't a big deal. So they were MIA, yeah. and you were doing your own thing. Yeah, yeah. When the second child come? Uh, second child didn't come until uh, I was all settled in here. Okay. Yeah, that was planned. That was planned. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was the feel if you were to compare 
obviously probably less fear. Yeah, the way time less around. fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why was there less fear, would you say, from your perspective? Uh, just because, uh, I mean, this time I knew what to expect. You know what I mean? I knew what it was like having a baby and what we needed to do to prepare and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, what the costs were <laughs> and that kind of stuff. The like, budget. Yeah, exactly. What the, what exactly. the budget's like. Um, but the thing is, was my, with my daughter, she came eight weeks early. Mm. So it was, uh, it was actually kind of scary. So she's number two. Yeah, she's number two. Okay. It was kind of scary. She came eight weeks early and, uh, yeah, me and my wife were in the hospital for a month straight. Jesus. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. That yeah. is, that is definitely scary. Yeah. Um, and then you have a third. Yeah. And then when does, she, when does he come? Uh, he's three. So three years okay. ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 So to sum up, uh, like each experience like how would you define like what does being a father mean to you and how would you define that have you gotten better over time would you say or like when um, which child were you were, was the most challenging when it came to being a father is what i want to ask being a father is challenging period mm. i mean you have to have the utmost amount of patience like you know what i mean it's just you, th- you think you need work at, you think you need patience at work <laughs> <laughs> to have kids is like another level of patience that you need. You know what I mean? See, there he is right there. Okay, okay. There's my little guy. <laughs> He's banging on the window. What are you guys doing in here, man? What's his name? Cameron. Cameron. So yeah. you got Josh, Cameron, and... Alyssa. Alyssa. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's a never-ending challenge, you'd no, say? No, no. Yeah, and I mean, even with Josh, he's very independent already. He's 14. Yeah. You know, he does his own thing, but I still got to get up every morning to get him up. Like, I'm his alarm clock. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just the little things that you got to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who do, who do you see yourself most in out of all three of them? My oldest son, Josh. The eldest? Yeah. 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 In what way? What 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 just characteristics everything, or attributes? Everything. His, yeah? his sense of humor. His mannerisms. Mannerism. Everything. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing, though. Yeah. Like, when I think about it, I yeah. want... I can't... I'm excited to experience that. Like, that... When, when you and I would talk at work, it's like... Even though we were getting, we were sharing, you were giving me a lot of pros and cons and stuff like that, showing me both sides. You yeah. weren't just like painting a fake picture for me. No. no, um, no. But I still got very excited when speaking with you because I'm talking to a young father, mm-hmm. a young husband, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, that could be me very soon or whatever. You know what I mean? And yep. I'm looking forward to that time in my life where. Life, I think just life is just beautiful in general. Cre- the creation, being able to create yeah. and bring a new life into this world that Absolutely. we live in. Absolutely. That's something to look forward to. Absolutely. But obviously it comes with those challenges. Yeah. Right? yeah. So did you, I want to talk about your life. So from when you were younger and looking back, is this where you saw yourself? Honestly, no. Honestly, I didn't I didn't know where I would land. Mm. And I've uh, I mean, I'm very I'm very thankful for, for, for a lot. No, I know I'll bleep that out. Yeah. No, no. But no, but <laughs> yeah, for yeah, me, for yeah, me, yeah, it's it's yeah. a bit different because no, of course, okay. took me under their wing from when I was yes. 14, 15. Yes. You know what I mean? OK, OK. So growing up, um, I had mentors yes. in in yes. the child and youth program yes, yes, yes. who took me under the wing under their wing and um got me into the summer day camp yes which is how i was introduced in right yes i mean <laughs> <laughs> um, i should have prefaced with no 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 don't but, say any no no it's no good. but the it's thing good. is is for me this is a part of my life 100 like, you know I mean? 100 this is a part of my 100%. life which is uh, another thing that i'm proud to share 100 you know what i mean yeah um, and they gave me a chance to work in, they gave me a chance to work, in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and I just kept moving up from, I, I was a cleaner, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. When I first started at 18, mm. I was a cleaner doing split shifts, six to 10, six to 10. Mm. And you just work your way up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds me of the person I met with yesterday who also, like, he started as a cleaner. Yeah. You know, a guy who's he came to Canada when he was 18 mm. and, you know, just started from the bottom. Started yeah. from the bottom. Yeah, you know, yeah. And now he's like, here, legi- you know. Man, when that song came out. Yeah. Legit. Like, a that, lot was, of people, that yeah. was on repeat for, like, a month. Yeah. For real. Yeah. 
and it, like work wise job like job wise like uh like coming from region to life wise life, life wise, wise yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. what i mean coming from region to be, love being wise here. love wise. exactly yeah. like everything like yeah. you know what i mean i started as i remember when i was in the restaurant business like i started as uh a dishwasher mm. and you i gotta start somewhere man you have to you don't start at the top man yeah what are your thoughts on people who do start at the top do you think they last do you think who starts at the top there are some people that start. <laughs> I don't know time, anybody. Right? Silver Spooners. Yeah, and, well, Silver you know? Spooners. I don't know any of them personally, and I don't know <laughs> if they last or not. No idea. No, they don't. But I don't think they have much to offer the world anyway because they're already settled, right? Mm-hmm. They're not going through the challenges that maybe you and I are. Like, yeah. There's no growth there if you're already starting at the top. Mm-hmm. You don't appreciate the growth. Mm-hmm. When you start at the quote unquote bottom, like the bottom to us is what it is to us. Someone might look at us and there might be starting lower than where we started absolutely. right absolutely yeah, yeah the bottom yeah. is only the bottom to us yeah. because it's from our perspective our, our experience absolutely but i think with that climb that that uh urge to be something more mm. or be somewhere else than where we're at today you appreciate that growth you're mm-hmm. gonna change you're gonna evolve you're gonna adapt to mm-hmm. each environment each stage each level mm-hmm. that you get at mm-hmm. some folks who are already there or who get stuff handed to them they might not know what that ever feels like, you know? Mm. Like, I have this fear that I'll never have uh, children. Mm. And I don't know. I don't want to put that on myself. You know what I mean? But like, have lots of years, buddy. When I, but when I see you, mm. it's like, it's not that I envy. It's just like, I wonder if my life, what, what, where would I be if my life was similar to yours? If mm. I started young as well. Mm-hmm. So that's why I asked you that question. Like, are you where you thought you would be when you were younger? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Did, was there somewhere specific that you wanted to be when you were younger? Did you have something in your mind, no. like a plan? At 18, I had no plan. Honestly, I really didn't. And honestly, if I didn't have my first child, yeah, I don't know where I would be now. Mm. I might not even be in this house. Mm. I might not be with the same agency that I'm with. Like, you know what I mean? Snowball effect. Yeah. Like, I mean, it could have changed a lot of things. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Where do you think you would be if you didn't? Don't know. I mean, I could I could be still in Regent Park, maybe selling drugs. Who knows? <sighs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but instead, I'm here, and I'm I, you know where I'm at work wise. <laughs> yeah, we all know now. <laughs> <laughs> but that, this is no, a, no, no, this is good. a thing. No, 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 you know good. what I mean? Yeah. This is something that I'm proud to share again. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking with you. You know? No, I appreciate. Uh, I appreciate you just being open. Like mm-hmm. this is what this is the element that I wanted to get you in. Yeah. That's why I go yeah. I go to to people's environments. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure they're comfortable, they're open. Mm-hmm. I it's a challenge for me to adapt. You know what I mean? I keep moving in my chair because I have never been here before. Right. But I I know I got to do this. Mm-hmm. I got to look at you eye to eye and just have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And hopefully there's someone out there listening and mm-hmm. watching and they're going to learn from this as well, just like I'm learning from you mm-hmm. and vice versa. Um we we covered the father part. Um, I want to get into what it's like for you to be a husband. Mm. Um, but what's what's next for you when it comes to being a father? Are you done with kids? Done. No, we're done. You're done. Done. Okay. Why? Because three is more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> three is three is a lot. Okay. It's a lot of work. Okay. So yeah. financially or just energy wise, everything. Because when I look at you, you don't look stressed. No, you don't look. Yeah, I mean, you know, some fathers you see even younger than us mm. who only have one child. Mm. They're stressed out of their minds. They're already balding. They I'm probably balding, got. <laughs> I'm balding. That's why the fitted is on today. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Silver streak and balding everything, bro. Like, I'm I'm proud to. But share But that's that like as well. after three. <laughs> I'm proud to share that. But that's after three kids, though. Yeah. It's not like you're like yeah. one child in at 21. Yeah. Oh, and your hairline is. I did the face app thing, the old, the old that everyone's doing. I didn't, sh- I didn't share. Yeah, right? good, 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 good. Okay, because that was everyone's for personal doing, use. Yeah, Pers- for personal <laughs> use, right? Oh my god, that's what I'm gonna look like in ten years, <laughs> working where I'm at with three kids. Yo, they're scanning us, man. They were. I don't. Well, that's a whole other conversation. I haven't done that. So, is that a filter? I'm not so familiar it's, with it's, it. What you do is you 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 essentially just take a picture of yourself. Yeah. And it ages you like. 30 40 years is it an app or it's, it's a an filter? app yeah. oh yeah, it's there's an app, app out yeah. there okay okay is Space it re- app or something like okay that. okay yeah, so yeah. it's a f- okay okay We're looking for sponsors man yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we need those. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Who and How Club. We are sponsored by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> the Who and How. Yeah. You know, until we get we get some folks uh, on bandwagon, we sponsor ourselves. All this equipment, all this logo stuff you see around the table, mm. the movement. This is uh, us. This is this is me starting from the bottom. You yeah, know what I absolutely. mean? Absolutely. This yeah. is this was an idea I had in my mind, and I put it on the table. I put it on paper. And that's I tried. Why, that's why I'm happy to support you for real. I appreciate I, that because I I know how tough this is. Mm. I know how tough mm. this is. I've tried different ventures myself. Yes, but go on. You can. No, no. It's just it's passion. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you believe in something, when you want to, this is my way of giving back to the world. Mm. To I truly believe that conversation can heal, mm. can teach can you know can do a lot if we just get to know one another and Mm. keep the conversation going i feel like the problem with the world at the moment it's like it's like conversation is becoming a lost art because so many people are not having the conversation in many categories as well not just when it comes to getting to know each other but even even when you're intimate with someone you gotta have a conversation to know that you're on the same page with somebody when you're in a relationship there has to be some sort of communication I'm 100% guilty of this, man. <laughs> In what aspect? I'm it's sending, just communication? I'm sending yeah. texts to people when they're in the same room as me, man. <laughs> I know that, but that's just because we can't talk out loud. No, no, but not even, not even that. Like, yeah. I mean, for some reason, I, I feel that I'm, I'm a better... I communicate better when, when it's through text or email or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But what happened... So right now, yeah. this... As you said, you we're in my envi- in my environment, right? Yeah. And I'm just I'm blanking out that. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like it's just me and you. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. So But when this is over, you're gonna be sending a bunch of texts and everything that's fine. like that. Like do you feel like do you feel like uh oh I just had a nice question. But like oh my god. Sorry. Guys. Uh-huh. Sorry. Guys. Ah. <laughs> that's my daughter kids. Alyssa and that's my neighbor. Hi, Natisha. Alyssa. Kids are in. Yeah. You know, if you hear anything uh, that kind of resonates with you from today's conversation, please, let's continue the conversation once the interview or this conversation is over. Uh, Feel free to DM me or DM Chris Mm -hmm. and get to know him a bit more and let's keep the conversation going. Sure. Even though Chris is here for the first time, this won't be the last. So any questions you guys have, if there's anything him and I are saying that kind of, you know, touches you in any way feel free to touch base with us or mention it on the live and i'll definitely share it um in the future shift is posted great um i wanted to ask you something you mentioned uh, the texting thing and i think i was gonna ask you like uh we said <laughs> we were talking about communication mm-hmm. um and you said that you would text people in the same room oh this is what i was gonna ask uh what so what did you do when this didn't exist like remember there was a time where we weren't texting right yeah, we yeah. were forced to yeah then to i would do talk this, on the phone right yeah, like yeah. you remember that yeah, like yeah. when you had to call a girl's house and say yeah. hey is jennifer there can i speak <laughs> with her oh she's not in oh i gotta wait until she comes back she might not even be back tonight or how about the pager <laughs> uh, you're you're you you're <laughs> Some people might be. You're asking, older what than me, and never, I've never had pager? that. I was, I never had that, but I remember I had a brick phone, like the Nokia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the yeah. Snake. Yeah, yeah. I had that was my first cell phone. Yeah. But even then, we weren't really texting as much, right? Mm. It cost to text. Yeah, yeah. And I miss that time. I miss that 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 time in in life where I could, I had to wait. I was forced to wait and be patient, like when I had to meet someone. Mm. I couldn't text and find out where they were. I would just have to trust them yeah. that they would show up at the time yeah. that they said. Yeah. And they might not be there at the time. I got to just chill and wait. They might be half an hour late, yeah. but we just wait. Like you. Patient. What do you mean? Like you today. <laughs> Fashionably late, okay? Chris now knows there's a lot that goes into this show. Yeah. And well, it's not as simple as, it's not well, just, oh, I'm going to show up and. So, yeah, I was a bit late today. Mm. Eh. But I was able to call you on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird that we could do that? I had no idea how to end the call. (laughs) I took a screenshot of us. I had no idea how to end the call. I'm in the car. I said, Chris, hang up the phone, guy. I I didn't know how to hang up. I'm watching Chris 
watching. Just so you guys know, you got to X. You have to press the exit <laughs> with the X at the top. That's how you end the call. I'm like, what the hell? The, Why don't you just have an N? The world that we live in now, where we could do all of this stuff. Isn't like, it crazy? I don't even know you can call people on Instagram. <laughs> would you Would you rather like be where we're at now, but still have the knowledge of how we used to operate back then? Or grow up in the time that we're in right now? Like, there are kids that are being born today yeah. that will never know anything that we're talking about right now. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Pager, payphone. We can we can talk to my kids and they don't know this stuff. Mm. You know? So, from your perspective, would you, if you, if you could change anything, would you still want to grow up back then or be born in this time? I mean, I wouldn't change anything. Wouldn't change anything. Nothing. Mm. I mean, I, I'm happy with how everything turned out. Yeah. Period. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, I'm happy with how, like, like I don't, I'm not really sure how to explain, but I'm just like, I'm happy how I turned out. I'm happy yes. how my family turned out. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't change anything in my past mm. to alter that. Mm. Do, you, do you teach your kids uh, the importance of communication at all? Like, what's texting kid your kids like? What's that like? There's okay. You guys ever so my so my son, my oldest son yeah he's the only person with a cell phone okay okay um and there is no communication with him <laughs> none no text nothing nothing so the Holler only at him on Twitter the only way I can communicate with him is I have to FaceTime him okay, okay. that's the only way yeah that's hey. still verbal that's still well it's yeah. Kind of face to face. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's the only way I can communicate with him. Okay. He doesn't answer text ever, ever, okay. ever. Okay. Or he'll just leave you on red. That's it. The time that we live in. Yeah. I think that's a fear of mine too. Like if I bring in, if I bring a child into this world, like mm. I, I, I want to look at the world first and see what the world is like. Do I want to bring someone into this, this life? Am I agreeing with how the world is? Mm. Will, will the way the world is at the moment? Uh, affect my child in a negative way mm. or is it all up to me to raise that child to not be affected in a negative way you know like wh- wh- what do you think is it is it all on me or yeah i mean it's i i think it's how you want to raise your kid you know what i mean because society to, will don't... play a play a part yeah how do we protect our children from the negatives of society you can't mm. You can, like I mean, you can't. Like mm. I mean, what are you gonna? Are you gonna put them in a bubble? Mm. Not give them access to social media. Mm. That's where they see most of this nonsense. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. I mean, and from like once your kid hits high school, that's like mm. a whole different ballpark. Yeah, that's a crucial stage in their lives. Yeah. But they're also gonna be very independent. Yeah, do their own thing, etc. Yeah. <sighs> okay, let's get to the husband aspect okay. of your life. Yeah. What, what, what's it like being a husband for you? Well, I mean, being... How would you rate yourself as a husband? <laughs> out of five. Out of five? Yeah. Be real. I don't know. Maybe like a three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. What's missing for you to get to that five? What, what's that percentage that's... Maybe more communication. Mm. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. You'd have to talk to my wife about that. One day I will. <laughs> we're gonna do a. She's probably here listening. We're gonna we're gonna do a <laughs> we're gonna do a relationship themed uh, yeah. couple themed yeah. episode. So communication would perf- would make you a bit better husband. But that that mm. three and a half. What what does that entail? Like what makes you what in from your perspective? What does make you a good husband? Would you say? Uh, I mean, being in a relationship, especially with a family, is more. It's like being a team Mm. you know just like i'm always relating it to work but i mean it's just like work like you know what i mean when you have your team it's the same thing like it's you got to work as a team right yeah everybody has a role to play exactly yeah i mean you know we like we all have our certain tasks that we do around the house you know what i mean yes so i mean uh, we just we played as a team and yeah i remember you said that uh i remember at work you were telling me that you guys went away for the five year, the five. You guys went away for the five year anniversary, right? Did you go somewhere? Um, so we just we got back from Mexico. Yeah. Uh, we went in May. Um, 
and it was our first family vacation actually okay yeah um so what what is that like celebrating like anniversaries yeah like i can't remember the last time i celebrated an anniversary yeah like what, uh, what's that like after being together for so long the years it, just do you start still, flying by, man. Do you still look forward to something? Or does Absolutely. she? Or? Yeah, yeah, we both do, yeah. We like, uh, you know, when we can, if we can uh, get out and have a kid-free night kind of thing. You yes, know, dinner like and a stuff date like night that. and yeah, stuff like night, that. Yeah, date night, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we. I mean, we, when we went to Mexico, we went as a family. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had, I mean, we had a great time. We had we have some pictures here on the wall. Maybe later you can, yeah, we'll get you know some B-roll. I mean? Pan over get to, some B-roll. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. What are your uh, pet peeves when it comes to, we'll just say life in general. You as Chris, what are some of your pet peeves? <laughs> negative people, man. Mm. You know, I don't like being around small-minded people who are negative and. You know, I always try to see the best in people. Mm. Um, but then there's just some people that are just negative and have no positive outlook on life. Mm. And I don't, I think this is another thing where me and you really relate. You like having positive energy around you. Yeah. And I, I really, I really feel the same way. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I feel like one of my, one of the things that, I, that I'm good at is uh, when I walk into a room, I feel like I bring a positive energy. Mm. I, I mean, I've been told that anyways. So, mm, mm, mm. Um, and that's 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 what I like to feel from other people as well. Yes, you know, um, other pet peeves. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to like think of what pet peeves I would have. Like people that don't know how to drive, like. <laughs> Like people, like I'm just trying, like seriously, yeah, 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 like day to day things that would drive me crazy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The negative thing, yeah, like you and I have that had. That would con- be the biggest thing for 100%. me. 100%. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you and I have had conversations about that. And, mm. like, <clears throat> do you ever find that, um, like, sometimes when I'm around negative energy, mm. I'll speak about it, right? And when you vocalize and acknowledge that negative energy, you might get trapped in that same type of energy as well. It might come across that because you're speaking about it or you're like, you come across like you're allowing it to affect you, but you got to talk about that negative energy and get it out. You can't pretend like that. Okay. So that, yeah, that all depends on your personality, to be honest. Mm. Me, I like to just remove myself from the situation. Mm. You want to be negative. You be negative in your own space. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Even if you are in my space, I will remove myself from that space and put myself in a, another space. But what if you're forced to, again, work? Let's say work, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to work. Even in a relationship, you said teamwork. Yeah. What if your partner is being negative? There's one week. There's a seven-day period where mm. that person is just not being a good team player. Mm. You can't remove yourself all the time because yeah. you gotta, you're forced to work. Yeah. What, how do you manage that? How do you adapt? You. So, yeah, then in that case, then... then you would have to you would have to approach it head on. Yeah. You would have to talk to the person about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just tell them that you don't appreciate their negative bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you like conflict? At no, all? I don't. You don't like conflict? No, okay. I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't like conflict uh, even at home, at work, nothing. Mm. I don't like mm, conflict mm, mm, no, mm. at all. What are some, uh, if someone was listening to this, like ran, people we don't know and, you know, they're thinking about, you know, they got someone in their lives right now. Mm. They're thinking about proposing, whatever, guy mm. or girl, you know, mm. if they were listening to you to get some knowledge mm. and you were to give them some pros and cons of, you know, the marriage life. What are a couple pros and a couple cons? I mean, that you would honestly, have? yeah. Marriage life is no different from being in a relationship that you've been in for a long time. Mm. That's my opinion. Mm. I mean, we got married. It didn't change anything. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Other than being married. You know what I mean? Her <laughs> last name. That's it. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. Mm. I don't want to crush any woman's dreams out there. But I mean. <laughs> but this is from your perspective. This right? is yeah, yeah. like this, this is, is this is that's my perspective. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. 
Um, but is that a pro or a con? The fact that things might not change really. I, I Do you mean, think I it changes more? Maybe we should have prefaced this as well, like prefaced the fact that everything spoken today is coming from the male perspective. Especially, yeah, of course, right? of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. uh, these things we know they mean different. Yeah, differently to yeah, yeah, yeah. to women. Yeah, so, of course. But the fact that things might not change so much is that a pro or a con? Would you say what category does that fit in? Because it is depends on, it is, depends on your outlook of what marriage looks like for you. Mm. You know. I mean, if you're you're expecting it to make it your relationship better into another level, mm. I don't think. I mean, what what it is really now in mm. this day is like it's just just showing your love to everybody else. Like you know what I mean? It's, you're showing your love to your partner with everybody else, and you know people just want to take all the pictures for social media. And you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what is. I really? never got into that. I don't. I, you know? I I can't. I refuse. Even if I were to get married tomorrow, I don't want anybody to know. Yeah. I I, I think that there's. So, so why are you private though? Huh? Why are you private though? I think this I, is a question that you that you asked me at the beginning. Why Why are you <laughs> private about your relationship? I think that it's. There's something. I feel like it's. It goes into like, the. Um. Like, you know, to open the door for a lady, it's proper etiquette mm. to like etiquette. It goes under the etiquette category. I don't think okay. it's proper etiquette for me to p- let people know who I'm sleeping with. OK, that's just me. Right. Or to know who I marry. Why? Because I feel like it's no like if I'm on as an artist. Right. Right. I'm a podcaster. I'm a rapper. Right. I'm a poet. Right. I share pieces of my life online already. Mm. There's pe- there are pieces I, I want to keep to myself. Right. Because I want to be able to hold on to those things for myself. Like, I'm still living back then mm. in those moments. Yeah. Like, when I was younger, everyone never knew who I was dealing They they Everyone wanted to know who who Eris was dating. Mm. Who's Eris dating? Who's Eris? He's getting pussy from somewhere. Mm. He's happy. Mm. But no one knows. Every, yeah. It's a secret. Yeah. I, I, I'm still, I still move that way. Yeah. There have been very few moments where like the, the girl that I was with kind of brought me out of my shell mm. and, you know, posted us online and it just never was me. Mm. It was never me. Mm. And I even, I just, I didn't delete them because we broke up. I just, that's not me. Mm. But I'll share my art, my creation, because this is what I'm giving to the world. I'm not giving my relationship to the world. This is me. This is my life. This is my heart. Mm. So no one needs to know, in my my opinion, you know? So right. even with the, the, like, I think posting my children at some point when they're grown and stuff, I would do that. Mm. But I see some people posting the baby that just got out the freaking womb. Mm. You're putting a camera in the face. Why? No one needs to know this. Enjoy the moment. You're at a concert. You're mm. at a concert. No, no, no. Listen. Talk to me. When you get there... <laughs> You I'm gonna want to show that. it. You won't be saying that, bro. You don't know me, Chris, or I'm you do you, know man. me. I'm telling you, I don't. I don't care how private of a person you are. Yeah, you're gonna want to show him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because why? There's a joy attached to it, and what? Because this is your child, something that you created. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're yeah. gonna want to share it with every single person. So it's similar you know. to my music and my podcast. Absolutely. Okay. Something that you created, something that took you time to create. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. For for. A mother it takes nine months in their stomach. Mm. You know what I mean? They mm. go through a ton of a ton of shit. Like, you know so I mean? look at what I done. Look yeah. at what I've done. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, and as a male, you you support the mother. Yes. Like yes. you know what I mean? You support her with whatever you know, pickles and ice cream, whatever it may be. <laughs> like you know what I mean? During that time, yes. exactly, exactly. I think I think in those moments, I I'm cool with that. Mm. I think there are some people like you were talking about the relationships earlier and the marriage thing. Like mm. they're just posting it for the f of it, or like for validation. Mm. They want that attention, the, for those the likes. likes for the likes. For you the know? likes, like, we both said it at the same time. Yeah, like yeah. I wouldn't. I if I were to do it, it mm. wouldn't be for that reason. It mm. would be because of what how you're describing it. Like yeah. look at what I created. Mm-hmm. This is art in itself. Mm-hmm. The 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 passion, the love that went into this. This is my bundle of joy. Yes. Bask, you know, mm. look at this world. Yes, that for sure. But 
for the the, the validation from others, anything external, mm. I wouldn't be doing it for that reason. I never understood that. People yeah. do that. They post their relationships. Look at my guy. But they break up in three months anyway. And then they post more pictures of another guy. Mm. It's like this cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For what? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, mean, I, don't, I don't crave that type of attention. You mm-hmm, know? So. Mm-hmm. Enough said about that. Mm-hmm. That's I think that's too negative. I guess. <laughs> Hold on one second, huh? Dying? Oh, the battery. Yeah, the battery is crazy. Um, because yeah, it didn't fully fully charge. How long are we at? We're already in an hour. So we're at hour twenty-eight. Twenty-one. Sorry. An hour? No, it's only fifty-two minutes. Oh, sorry, half an hour. Sorry. Don't kill me. <laughs> Don't kill me. Is that the second half hour? Or this is we're still the first? The, no, we're on the, second half hour. the second half hour. Okay, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to do a little segment at the moment called Ask the Club. Mm. Um, so this is where we uh, allow our special guests uh, to just bring some questions to the table to either ask me and ask the listeners or viewers. Of course, this isn't just for me to answer. For those who are listening in, and watching you can uh respond to these questions as well you could dm at who how club on all social media platforms or uh go on the website to get our email uh www.whohowclub.com you can holler at me on my socials you know what it is only one heiress <clears throat> and um just a reminder people you know this isn't an interview this isn't me inviting you know just to, you know, I don't have a bunch of questions listed. We're just going off the fly. This is what a conversation is supposed to look like. And a conversation doesn't end. Uh, <laughs> I have questions the, listed. The conversation, he has questions <laughs> listed. But the, the, the conversation, the goal of this is for the conversation to keep going. Uh, you know, you're seeing Chris for the first time, but it won't be the last. And once again, Chris, I appreciate you being here. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you sharing everything that you're sharing and just bringing your energy to the table with no, no limits, you mm-hmm. know. Let's I keep appreciate going. you letting me be here. 100%. For real. This is it. So my first question is, is why did you pick the Who How Club? Like, why why that name? Why the name? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> why the name Who and How? Yeah. So I feel like I wanted it to be, I wanted, I wanted it to represent people, mm. us, uh, us as people on this planet. Mm. You know, like the, my tagline is like, you are the who and how, I am the who and how, mm-hmm. we are the who and how. Mm-hmm. We're the who's and the how's of this world. We make the world go round. Mm-hmm. And who we are and how we've become and how we become who we are is very important to life in general. Mm-hmm. Like we got to figure out our purpose in life. You know, some people's purposes are to just, you know, just to work a nine to five, get that picket fence with the dogs. Some people's <laughs> purposes are to you know, break every rule possible yeah. and find a loophole to whatever. Yeah. I think I think our goal in life is to figure out our purpose and figure out who we are and acknowledge how we've become who we are. That process. Never forget that process. Mm. A lot of famous people they'll pop up. We don't know shit about them, but mm. we know they're famous. But what about the process? What about the process? The mm. how? Mm. Let's figure out the how. And the people that I invite onto the show, I want to talk to them about the how. Mm. How did you become Chris today? Mm -hmm. You know, because you weren't Chris, you weren't the same Chris back then, and you're not going to be the same Chris ten years from now. So we, I want to talk about that process. Mm. So I want to get to know who you are, and also asking the question, "Who are you?" is so difficult Mm. to answer. Mm -hmm. People never really know the answer. They define that by what they do. And maybe by their names that they were given. Mm. I want to find out how you define who you are as a person. Because mm-hmm. I don't even know the answer. Mm-hmm. And if I don't, you definitely don't. Mm-hmm. I'm still figuring it out. It's an ongoing process. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> you guys tell me out there, like, what, what do you think who and how represents to you? And uh, share with me. I'd love to get your perspectives on that. That's a good great, question. That's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> I love this. So. Part. What what do you plan to get out of these interviews slash podcasts? Um, what, like me personally, mm-hmm. or like what the goal is? No, no, like you personally. What do you plan to get out of this? Um. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you because mm. you've been real with me. Yeah, yeah. I don't like people. Okay. But I like people. People intrigue me. Okay. The way the reason the reasoning behind 
our decision making mm -hmm. why we choose to speak the way we speak the words we choose to speak mm -hmm. uh, our perspectives I care about those things right and uh, they intrigue me okay. the differences in all of us even though we're so much alike mm -hmm. you cut we bleed the same yeah you know yeah. there are millions of us with you know we're, we're the same height we all got eyes we all got tongues we got voices etc but we might speak different languages mm -hmm. we might be experiencing different things mm -hmm. i want to delve into those things with other human beings and find out what makes them them mm -hmm. and maybe i could learn more about myself as well but also give it's not like more of a take it's a take and give kind of thing like one hand washes the other right. as much as i might not uh like some people on this planet because i feel like some of us are the reason why reasons why the world is some pieces and parts of the world are going down mm -hmm. and they're their detriment you know cutting down trees you know the things that have been here before us mm -hmm. putting animals in zoos mm -hmm. that's a human thing that those are the problem problematic human beings that i don't appreciate right but the people who are choosing to live a healthy life and create new life mm -hmm. You know, I want to I want to learn from these people and teach about myself as well. So mm -hmm. it's just learning. It's just I feel like there's knowledge and conversation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if that answered it. Yeah, no, yeah, that yeah. answers yeah. it. Yeah. Um, what kind of audience are you looking for? Um, like, yeah, out there who's watching now and who will be watching your video. Mm, good question. Fearless people. OK. People who are fearless like me. It took me a while to become as fearless as I am. Yeah. And there's still a lot to go to mm -hmm. go when it comes to that. But people who the type of fearlessness I'm talking about is the pe are the people who aren't afraid to do what you're doing today, which mm -hmm. is sharing a piece of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked you, like, why do you think people are so private? Mm hmm. Like they're so private in one area, but so public in another mm -hmm. that you can't. There's no in between. Yeah. You're either not afraid to share pieces of who you are mm -hmm. or you're afraid. Mm -hmm. And I want to even those who are fearless, I appreciate them and they might they might have less work to be done on them. But I still want to talk to the people who are afraid to try to get them out of their shells as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So a bit of both. I want fearless people and I want people who are afraid that, but who are willing to make that jump and take that jump to share pieces of their lives, their upbringing, their perspectives mm. with no rules. Yeah. We were given voices for a reason. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk it all out. Let's talk the perspectives. Let's not be afraid to offend each other. Mm. Just put it out on the table and share. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's what that's I, good. that's my goal anyway. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to inspire. Mm. Do you plan on starting a YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, so the YouTube is up. Oh, it's up? Yeah, yeah, it's oh, up okay, now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you're our... Okay, so I started the the, the show a couple times, and uh, the first couple times, it just didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, but it is now becoming what I always envisioned this becoming. Good. Um, so, like, you're my first, second official guest, you know mm. what I mean? So, mm. I post the, uh, the visuals of the interviews. Mm-hmm. And uh, those in between episodes where it's just me, mm. I'm just chilling. Mm. I don't put any visuals out because it'd be the same type of visuals every week. Right. It'll be very redundant. Mm. But when I have a special guest on, I want people to be able to view that and to view these the, the the facial expressions and conversations, the laughter. Yeah, the, yeah. You know what I mean. So the YouTube channel is officially up now. Okay. I'll and make sure I go subscribe. One hundred percent. You'll get the links when this is up. All right. So all you right. could watch us and we could critique each other and yeah. be like, you know what, next time. Let's do it this way. Yeah. Or let's do it in a different room. Or let's do it outside next yeah. time in the backyard or something. You know what I mean? Hot as shit right now, man. You don't want to. <clears throat> Were that, was that your last question? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you heard any questions that were, uh, you know, posed by Chris, feel free to leave some comments. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate you for joining in. Any last words you want to... Any... Mm, if you had... Here's my last question, mm. and it's uh, it's father related. Okay. Um, if you had any advice to like any new fathers out there, mm -hmm. you know, some guy who you just found out his girl is pregnant might not know what to do. Right. Might be struggling. Um, well, I would take it a step back. Yeah. And just say, make sure you pick the right partner. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to get into something like that and then choose the wrong partner and mm. then eventually have having to share custody with someone and weekends and nonsense. I know many people that are going through that. Yes. And it's it's I mean, it's no fair for the children. Firstly. Yes. Secondly, it's it's I mean, it's not something anyone wants to do. Mm. So choose the right partner would be my advice to anybody. You know, make sure that that's the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Um, and then for being a parent, I mean, just be very patient. Um, I mean, <laughs> that's, I mean, just being a parent is just a lot of patience. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't stress that enough. Like, really. Um, I mean, there's sometimes I just want. <laughs> They really bring out the ghetto in me, man. I just want to <laughs> stomp their ass, man. You don't understand. Uh, but, you know, you just got to communicate. Yes. Right? Um, communicate with your partner as well. Um, and that's it, really. Are you naturally a patient person? Or would you I say you've so. gotten better at patience or having patience with people because of your role as a father and a husband? Of anything, I think my patience is starting to wear thinner as I get older. For real. No, for real. Um, I mean, with three kids, life here at home and, Bunch and work. Bunch bullcrap people. And work. We're like, surrounded you know what I mean? by stupid. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, as I get older, I think my patience is wearing thinner, which is unfortunate. But, yeah. I feel like as I'm getting older, maybe you could relate to it. Like, I don't think my patience is wearing thinner. I think we just are able to see the bull crap yeah. quicker and sooner. Yeah. And we're not afraid to call it out or be like, or not just not put up with it. Yeah. And I think that thing that comes with like maturity yeah. and age, I guess. Like yeah, we've been yeah. on here. We've been on this planet for a while. Yeah. You're not going to. Sometimes I feel like I'm being a pessimist, though. Like, you know what I mean? I'm saying mm. like. Like I'm just I'm just going right to the bad things. Mm, like, you know what I mean? Mm, mm. Which you know they make it hard though. They yeah. make it hard for us to see the good, especially folks who are just bringing the bad. Like mm, you're mm. you're very focused on bringing the good. I and try to be. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing that I admire about you is like you're pretty positive no matter the environment that you're in. Mm -hmm. So I understand when like you're trying your best to be the most positive, mm -hmm. but you're just getting hit with this type of energy that's just like it's like. Don't you want to be good too? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to be happy? Yeah. Why don't you want to spread that positivity? I, positivity? I don't understand what's, it, man. What's bothering you? Let's talk it out. I know. Go Maybe get I can late or you. something, man. <laughs> do, shit. do something with it. Do something. Yeah. All that energy you're, you're using to be negative. Yeah. You could go and create. You could go build something. That's what I'm saying. Go man. write a book yeah. about how you're feeling. Yeah. Go punch a wall or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get that shit out of here. Final final stuff, actually. That was the pre-final. Any highlights or lowlights of your week? We're meeting on a Wednesday. Today's what? Wednesday. Mm. Any highlights or lowlights of your week so far? Like, highlights meaning like something positive and uh, lowlights the opposite of that. So, as you were, as you were talking about before, um, your highs and lows with taking on ventures of... Uh, your podcast and what if you had any other stuff that you've been doing yeah i mean i've uh i've tried to uh once upon a time i had my own clothing that yeah. i did you know yeah. yeah i did that for about a year maybe longer whatever right yeah, yeah. and then uh <coughs> what else did i do i mean i did a whole bunch of stuff you know yeah and now like just recently i started detailing cars yeah so and th but this is something that i'm very passionate about you know i feel um like this is like I I think me and you are kind of the same when it comes to that. Like we're O C D about clean things, like you know what I mean? Detailed, uh, yeah, very so, detail so, oriented and stuff. Exactly. So yeah. when it comes to detailing and getting like even like the littlest things clean on a car for me, because I'm a I'm a car guy. Yeah. Um and detailing cars is just like a thing that I love to do. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is something that I was doing for myself because we have two cars here at home yeah my car and my wife's car and this is something that i was doing just on my car and my wife's car and i was sharing it and people just said you know maybe can you do my car you know what i mean and i'll pay you like you know what i mean yeah so this is something that i just started doing myself as well yes um but so my highlight for this week um i have a mustang that i'm doing tomorrow <laughs> so that's my highlight 
Uh, my low light would be uh, or low light. Yeah, 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 low yeah. light. So yeah, yeah. My pressure washer broke on the weekend, so um, I had to send it back, and I'm getting a new one. But uh, someone was willing to lend me one, so I mm. can do this Mustang. Mm. So that's dope. Yeah. So you got some good stuff. So if they, if anybody wants their car detailed, mm-hmm. or they could just holler at you on your Instagram. Yeah. Give that yeah. out again. It's uh, big red, red eighty six. And you can just DM me or whatever. Yeah. Your or, details. Yeah. And go on my IG and look for Chris if you missed his IG or you can't find them. Mm-hmm. Uh, find him. Sorry. Just type in Big Red. And, uh, you know, you're going to be tagged anyway. So people can holler at you. Hopefully you'll get some business from this, too. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's hard keeping up once. Uh, once you <laughs> once it busy. starts yeah. rolling. I mean, I, there was uh, one time where I did three cars like three days in a row. Yeah. And each car takes me like three, four hours. Yeah. Was dr- which also drives my wife nuts. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it it takes a toll on you, man. But you're passionate about something. Yeah, yeah. You keep busy. You're you, the fact you're a husband, you're a dad, you know, you're yeah. you're a hard worker. Yeah, you're passionate about stuff. You keep busy. Just trying to juggle life, man. Trying to <laughs> eat good, go to the gym. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can write a book on weight loss too. By the way, like, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. No stress in your face, bro. Yeah, Keep man. it like, up. I mean, yeah, that's another no, story. No, no, no. That's gonna, another story. We're going to have a part two. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to close off, ladies and gentlemen. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club. Today is badge day for Chris. Chris, you're an honorary member of the mm-hmm. club. All right. I appreciate you. We wear this on the left. All right, bro. Where the heart is. Mm-hmm. Keep that close. I appreciate you. I admire you, and that's why you're here today. Thank you, sir. We're going to keep the conversation going. This won't be the last time you're on the show. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in and who's going to be listening in, watching this, all of that. Keep up with the movement. Follow me on my journey as I have conversations with folks who uh, who mean something to me. And I'm going to have some strangers that I don't know at all on mm. this show, and we're just going to have a conversation. We're going to get to know some people and as you can see as the show has begun we got some really dope people coming on the show so if you're interested coming on the show send me a dm send me some little information about yourself who you are a little bit about your story and i'll put you on Mm. and let's support one another all right this has been the who and how club episode five see you guys next week thanks for tuning in